So I'm Martin Bush, um, I'm Creative Director of Body Center Advertising. Um, we're a national advertising agency that started in Cardiff in about 1957. We've now got offices in Manchester, Leeds, um, London, Bristol, so sort of throughout the country basically. Um, in the Cardiff office, we specialize in advertising. We've also got a large PR department there, something else called CRM, which I won't go into details on because I'm sure you all want to know what that for the slides all about. Um, give me a broom and I'll stick it up my ass and sweep up once I'm acting. Now that's a quote to the council about 15, 20 years ago. I used to work with a person called uh, Michelle Pope. She always used to say that phrase. And back 15, 20 years ago, that was because of the amount of work that's expected of a, a designer or a creative person. It was always about the quantity. And I thought this phrase and thought today that it, the phrase is still applicable, but it means something quite different. I think that nowadays the, the expectations of the creative is, is not just the quantity, it's the diversity as well. So no longer is it a case of years one ad, years one poster, years one leaflet, then we've got another ad, another poster, another leaflet. I think the expectations of the creative <coughs> are certainly in my industry, and they're a lot different. So it's, it's about the variety of work, uh, basically, that you're asked to do. So, Facebook, every time I go on it, it always asks me what's on my mind sometimes. I might tell it, sometimes I don't. But what's on my mind today is um, innovation, which um, I hope I've just set up. So, like I say, it's not so much a question of <coughs> the quantity that we've worked into anymore, it's to the quality of your thinking. So I'm going to show you some examples, some of the work that we've done, some of the work done by other agencies that I admire. But I don't want this to be a showcase of, of creative work. I prefer it to be a showcase of how you need to approach um, the different way that you approach thinking. This is a client of ours. Um, they don't spend a lot of money. That's not really important. Um, they, they're funded by the Welsh Government and it's drink-wise way. So I think when I've done this last year, I just showed some of the graphics of this site. Now I'm, I'm sort of concentrating more on the content. Um, part of the brief for Drink Wise Wales was for us to communicate um, to our target audience, people in Wales, how to enjoy drinking safely, basically, and, and responsibly. Um, and so they had a number of things that they wanted us to communicate. But what was most important to them was the way we communicate. So the three things they wanted uh, was a drinks calculator, so you can work out how much you're drinking, and whether that's the same thing. Um, there was some what we call new news to tell their audience how much caffeine and sugar in some of the drinks that they drink. They also wanted to, people to realise just how um, when you have something to drink, they affect your reactions. Now, we could have just done three web pages with three paragraphs, copy, jump down, tell people the stuff, they read it, fair enough, if they don't, well, there we are. But our approach was, um, in order to make this information stick, slightly different. And there's nothing groundbreaking here. This is just moving away from the, the simple answer to try and find a more uh, divisive way of, of communicating information. So when we've done the drinks calculator, um, instead of it just saying how many do you drink when you have a night out, oh that's fine for you, you shouldn't do that because so many units is unhealthy. Um, we devised this sort of interactive thing and again it was very simple. You choose whether, it was, whether you're a male or a female. And then on a typical night out, you select how many drinks you have. When you submit it, the difference is, is if we calculate what were safe levels of drinking or not. But you have bespoke advice as to, say you clicked on, I've had, I have 16 points of Stella on a night out. Then the advice would be more appropriate to someone who's got a drink problem, someone who said, I have three glasses of wine, and then they'd say, just keep yourself hydrated, and you know, that you're drinking at the safe level. So, as, rather than just telling people what safe levels are, it also offers um, bespoke advice to that individual. So it's changed this piece of communication from something that is just a bland piece of copy that just tells you everything, to um, a bespoke piece of communication that's relevant to you. Um, just going through some of the other devices we use on our website as well, the um, energy drink and the amount of 
sugar and the amount of caffeine that's found in some drinks. Again, rather than just saying, did you know the vodka made gold base, equivalent to four cups of coffee and eight sugars um, in, in the energy drink in the Red Bull. Instead, we just devised this little bar thing so you drag the things on. So again, if you've had so many drinks, it gives you um, a realistic sort of, um, shows you exactly what equivalent to the amount of alcoholic units, the amount of sugars or the equivalent cups of coffee is. So you may think, oh, I've only got up about like, three vodka Red Bulls. You might find out you've had the equivalent of 16 cups of coffee and 18 sugars as well as consuming like 14 units of alcohol. So again, this is information we could have just had text-based, but what we've done is just made that slight interactivity just so people take that on. And thirdly, again, keeping within the, the, the tone of the site as well, we wanted to do a reactions game, and budget was prohibitive on this. That's something you'll find in the commercial world. Budgets are always prohibitive. So we just reskinned another game, and um, the way this works, you just catch the eggs from the farmhouse. But there's a delay built into this game, which um, sort of reflects the delayed reactions you might have when you consume alcohol. So the further you go into the game, the more the delay is and the harder it is to catch those eggs. So really, the, the message was in the medium as well. Rather than saying to people, you know, your reactions are slower when you have a drink, you could kill someone driving a car. That doesn't really fit in the, the tonality of our healthy guide to enjoy the drink. We felt we could make the same point about your reaction slowly by making something uh, interactive. So what I'm saying is ordinarily 15 years ago those three things would have been done with a photograph and a piece of copy. Nowadays you have to devise other techniques to get the information across. Um, that was quite an informative thing. I've just used stills from something we've created here. This was um, a brief from Welsh Rugby Union, who asked us to create a film um, to show before their rugby matches in the Millennium Stadium. Uh, the, the brief was to uh, inspire the crowd basically just before kick-off at a rugby match. So um, the long and short bit is we devised a one-minute film which was all produced in CGI. A uh, very passionate piece which all began with the, the Wales Rugby Union logo turning into uh, this character which then um, basically <coughs> does a few rugby moves, goes across the pitch, uh, scores a try, uh, although um, the opposition tried to stop it and this character falls to pieces and then reforms the Welsh Rugby logo. But the difference in this piece of communication to the one I showed you earlier is the other one was very informative. This was purely emotional. Um, I didn't bring the actual film with me today because um, software has let me down in the past when I tried to show it. I wasn't expecting it to work today, so I only brought the stills. Um, but the music was composed bespoke for this as well. Um, the action is, is done in a way that um, it does nothing, certainly if you're a much person, inspire you um, and build some passion in your soul, basically. And this is just before the, the, the rugby players come on the pitch. So we've gone from a piece of communication that was informative to something that was devised to be purely emotional. Then on the back of this, <coughs> there was other things created. We used the CGI environment, produced other bits of film, even an animation of the logo, when they showed replays of conversions, of tries, etc. There was need a cutting point between showing the live action and showing the replay. Then we done a few animations um, using the logo so they can edit at that point. And also, before the games, there was um, relevant information that supporters would like to know as well. So this again was animated. These slides would, would come on. There'd be some effects the background was moving as well. We'd go through all the Welsh players and the opposition as well. So the emotional piece was really um, these in information pieces were born out of the emotional pieces of design. And again, I trained as a graphic designer. No one told me I would be doing interactive websites 15, 20 years ago. No one told me I would be making pieces of film or doing information graphics for rugby players. So it's always a question of, of broadening um, your creative experience. Um, being open to different ways of communicating ideas. This is another one of our clients, Welsh Lam, who come here, showed you a TV commercial we finished about two months ago for them. 
We've done print campaigns that's running in the UK, we've done print campaigns running throughout Europe. Um, this is something we've done in conjunction with our PR departments, and again, it's, it's nothing revolutionary, but it's certainly very necessary. Um, our print and television <coughs> campaign is very passive. You watch it, you read it, you look at it, end of story, you either buy it or you don't. Whereas the, the Facebook site allows that interactivity for the brand, whereas before it was just something that you looked at, experienced, decided to purchase. Here yeah, it then became part of your social network. You know, then the usual stuff, you have competitions, um, you have celebrities who, who may um, offer advice, celebrity chefs who may offer advice on different recipes, um, you know, forms a sort of community around it. And again, Managing something like this is full time in itself, uh, and it's something we do in combination with the Public Relations Department. Again, a few years ago, the Public Relations Department would have very little to do with us. They may come in and say, Can you uh, design this newsletter for us? And that's about as far as we go. We find now a lot of our work sort of links into theirs as well. And uh, this was another brief that came to us um, from. <coughs> Devon County Council, and I've kept all these things sort of like, like um, quite low-key as well, because I thought it's quite good to see that invention can get you a lot a long way. Um, when we were briefed by Devon County Council, they wanted uh, an agency, basically, a communications agency. So they sent us a brief, um, and it was a fictitious brief. All they said to us was that um, they felt that young people in one of their, their towns, Elphicum, um, felt sort of separated from the local community. They didn't feel that there was much respect to the local community of the young people, and vice versa. And they just said, what would you do as a piece of communication to alter that? So rather than doing a PR campaign, or some ads with a local councillor in a local newspaper saying, oh, everything's great, you know, you know, we can all work together and make this a lovely community. We, we devised something else and the reason I'm showing you this as well, that this pitch was sent to a number of agencies and they said they would award, um, they would appoint the agency based on the creativity within which they reacted to the brief. Uh, so it wasn't as if it, this was going to go ahead, but they wanted to see how fresh the ideas was. So our, our idea was to create um, a number of things, but the, the main thing would have been an event because it's so frequently we see that our face was in the sort of vernacular of young people as well. And so it was a series of events that would transform the way that Elfrican young people view themselves and the way they're viewed um, by the older generations. So it was to do with workshops and stuff like that. Now, again, don't get me wrong, I know nothing about planning events or whatever, but we just thought that if there's a way that you want to get communities together, you want to involve young people, we figured that an event would be the right thing. And in this business, you can always find people who can help you do something. <coughs> All you need to do is have the idea. You can always get the, the specialists to come in and help you realise that idea. So, um, again, going back to Shelley's comment at the beginning, before it was just about the quantity of stuff. Now it's about the diversity of things you sort of need to think about. So, there we are thinking about creating festivals where really we're a traditional advertising agency. Then, um, just different events that you could possibly have at this event. Um, so, you know, the, the festival weekend we said would be the icing on the cake, a celebration of the Transform Elfrican, which is a celebration of its youngsters and their talents. Um, use people from the area, young bands, dance acts, artists. Um, some of the youngsters then who've taken part, try things for the first time to be part.